Greetings! Welcome to lecture number seven on basic circuit theory. I am Beza Rozavi. Today we will continue to look at the concept of supernode and see how exactly we apply that idea. And to do so, first we're going to make a note on writing KVLs uh, in the context of supernodes, uh, and then we'll go over a bunch of examples showing how we apply supernode to circuits that have a voltage source in them, and how we uh, write all the equations that we need uh, to solve a given circuit. But before we go there, let's uh, start with uh, what we covered last time in lecture number six. Uh, we talked about node analysis in detail, and we saw that there were four steps in that analysis. First, we had to select a reference or ground node. Any node can do that. And uh, then uh, we assign voltages to all the other nodes in the circuit. So if the circuit has n nodes, one of which becomes ground, we are left with n minus 1 nodes, and for those we assign voltages. In the third step, we find the current through every branch in terms of the voltages that we have assigned. So for example, the current through this resistor is the voltage on the left minus the voltage on the right, divided by the resistor. This current is going from left to right. In the fourth step, we uh, uh, write KCLs for all of these nodes. Now that I have all these currents, I can write the KCL here, I can write the KCL here. I end up with N minus 1 KCLs and the N minus 1 voltages, so I can solve the circuit. All right, then we saw that uh, if a circuit has a voltage source in it, uh, the situation is a little more complicated. We saw that if we attempt to uh, define a current for this voltage source, call it any a current I1, uh, then uh, we uh, did not have enough equations after we finished the analysis. And this was really because when I introduce a new current here, I also introduce a new equation, so I'm not really sol uh, helping with the total number of equations that I need. Uh, remember that the voltage source does not satisfy Ohm's law, so this current and this voltage are not uniquely related. So we decided not to do that, not to write a current here for this voltage source. Instead, we uh, go to the concept of supernode, and what that means is that we take this voltage source and the two nodes attached to it and put them in a box. So this red box is our supernode now. And to this box, enter some wires, and from it, leave some wires. So we just need to add up all the currents that are going into this box algebraically and equate the result to zero because KCL also has to hold for all of these currents, right? Charge cannot disappear, so all of these currents that are entering or exiting this red box have to add up to zero. So that's one KCL that we write. Uh, we write one KCL for the supernode. Now, because I have merged these two nodes into one supernode, I have lost one KCL. So I have to make up for it by writing a KVL. And that KVL is one involving this voltage source, this voltage, and this voltage. So for example, here we say here VA is equal to V1 plus VB. So that's one more KVL. And now we have all the equations that we need to solve the circuit. So today we will elaborate on these concepts and uh, go through all the four steps that node analysis requires and the two additional steps that uh, uh, a super node requires. But before we go there, I just wanted to make a note on uh, situations like this. So I, as we just saw, we have a voltage here, we have a voltage here, we have a voltage source, and we need to write a KVL involving these three voltages. So we just have to be careful with the signs of these voltages. So let's uh, go over that carefully and see how this is done without any confusion. All right, so a note on writing KVLs. Okay, so we have that situation. So again, we have a, some circuit uh, that happens to contain a voltage source equal to V1, and we have assigned our voltages, so VA here, VB here, and we have various 
other components uh, and we have selected something to be the ground, etc. right? And uh, now that we have selected a super node and written a KCL for it, you also have to write a KVL. All right, so I would like to write a KVL in terms of VA, V1, and VB. And I have to see which ones take a positive sign, which ones take a negative sign. Okay, so the key point here is that when I say this node voltage is VA, what I really mean is that it's VA volts with respect to ground. And if I do that, then what I really mean is that VA has its positive end here and its negative end here. That's what, uh, what it means when we say the voltage difference between two nodes is VA volts. Similarly for VB, what we really mean is that VB has its positive end here and its negative end here. VB is measured with respect to ground. Okay, so now that I have these signs in my mind, I can go ahead and write a KVL. Starting from here, I am going up the potential by VA volts. So I will write plus a VA. Here I'm going down the potential by V1 volts. So minus V1. Here I'm going down the potential by VB volts. So I write minus VB equals zero. So that's the KVL I need involving the voltage source that's giving us trouble and the two voltages on its two sides that I have assigned in my node analysis. Okay, so with that in mind, we can go ahead and look at some examples. So let's start with a relatively simple example just to warm up. Okay, so this example has, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, okay. All right, let me find my example here. Okay, so the example consists of a current source, I1, a resistor, R1, a voltage source, Vx, another resistor here called R2, and a current source here called I2. Okay, very simple. And we would like to solve the circuit, meaning we would like to find all of the voltages and currents in the circuit. All right, so uh, we see that uh, the circuit has all these nodes, so we go ahead and carry out all of the six steps, uh, four for node analysis in general and two for the case of uh, having a voltage source and dealing with a super node. So step number one, uh, find a ground. Anything will, will be fine in node, so let's pick this node to be the ground. Uh, why? Well, probably because this node will be easiest in terms of analysis. I have four branches coming to this wire. These all form one node because they're all connected by an ideal piece of wire. And uh, the node that is busiest, meaning it has the largest number of connections to it, is a good candidate to be the ground. Okay, and then what else is left? We have a node here, we have a node here. So let's go ahead and give them names, voltages. So we call this uh, VA and we call this VB. So we have two unknowns, VA and VB. So we need to write two equations. Okay. Well, I have a voltage source here. Uh, I need to write the KCL. Uh, I, first, before I write the KCL, let's carry out the third step, meaning find the current through every branch, if possible. How much is the current through R1? Uh, well, the current through R1 is uh, given by, uh, let's change the color here to green. Uh, this current, going from top to bottom, is given by the voltage on the top minus the voltage on the bottom divided by the resistance. So that's equal to VA over R1. Okay. And uh, this one, R2, has a current in it. And again, the current going from top to bottom is given by the voltage on the top minus the voltage on the bottom divided by the resistor. So that's VB over R2. 
Okay. The current through this branch is defined by I1, so that's just that. The current through this branch is defined by I2, that's just that. So that's the third step. In the fourth step, we're going to write KCLs. Now, as you saw last time, we can't write a KCL here at this node by itself because that would require a current through this voltage source. And we saw that if we assign a current to this voltage source, we don't end up with enough equations. So we don't do that. We say instead of uh, putting a current here, assigning a current here, we will take the voltage source and the two nodes attached to it and put the whole thing in a box. This is our super node. And this box, again, has a bunch of branches going to it, so we can write the KCL for all those branches. So we see that uh, uh, this box receives a current of I1 that's going in. So I say uh, I have a KCL for my super node, so I have I1 going in. Anything else going in? Uh, no, these are all coming out, so that should be equal to uh, this current coming out, so VA over R1. This current is coming out of the box, plus uh, VB over R2. And then finally, this current is coming out of the box, so plus I2. So that's one KCL that we have. All right. Okay, so ideally I would like to have two KCLs, but because of the merging action, because the way we merge these two nodes into a super node, we lost the KCL. So we have only one KCL. All right, but we have two unknowns, VA and VB. So we need to write one more equation. That equation has to be a KVL, not a KCL. A KVL involving the voltage source and the two voltages on its two sides. Okay, so that should be easy, right? This is very similar to what I had here. So I will say, uh, again, my mind VA has high potential here, low potential at ground. So I start from ground and I go towards VA like this. So I write, so that's my KVL. Going from low potential to high potential like this. So plus VA. Then going down here, going high, from high potential to low potential minus Vx, going from high potential to low potential, minus Vb, like this, right, going to have high potential to low potential, this has to be zero. So now we have two equations and two unknowns, Va and Vb, so we can find everything. All right, so that's uh, an example of how these mechanics proceed. We have a total of six steps that we have to follow. Uh, the last two steps include uh, creating a super node and merging these two and writing a KCL for it. So that's the sixth step. And uh, the fifth step and the sixth step is to write a KVL involving this voltage source and these two voltages. All right, so let's summarize uh, our understanding and our procedure for the case of super nodes so that it's all clear for the future. So summary. So there are two points here. Point number one, every voltage source that we have in the circuit uh, eliminates one KCL, right? Because you see that here, I was supposed to write one KCL here, one KCL here, but because of the concept of super node, I ended up with writing only one KCL. So we say every voltage source reduces the uh, number of uh, KCLs by one. So we have to remember that, right? So then we have to make up for that missing KCL by a KVL. So we say need to write a KVL. Okay, uh, the second point that we also want to uh, verbalize here is that uh, we do not attempt to write a KCL at either terminal of a voltage source. So I don't write a KCL here. I tried this last time, it didn't work, right? In other words, I don't give a current, I don't assign a current here, I don't call that anything, and I don't try to write, to write a KCL here. 
or a KCL here. I always write the KCL for this whole thing uh, so that I have a meaningful result. So do not write a KCL at either terminal of a voltage source. Okay, so I hope this is not confused with the super node, right? For the super node, we write the KCL for this whole thing. Uh, what this point means is do not write a KCL here because there's a voltage source connected to it. We do not want the current of the current source to be, the voltage source to be involved in that KCL. Okay, so with that, uh, we now go over some more examples. So let's look at an example here. This is a little more complex, a little more interesting. So let's uh, look at that. Uh, here's uh, what we have. So we have a resistor R1. We have a dependent voltage source whose value is 2Vx. Vx is somewhere else. We have to see where that is. And then we have another resistor here, R2. Another resistor here, R3. And then another voltage source here, V2. And these are all connected like this. And Vx happens to be this voltage here, Vx. Okay. All right. So let's eyeball the circuit for a moment and see what's going on here. We see that uh, we have a few resistors. We have an independent voltage source, V2. And then we have a dependent voltage source equal to 2Vx, where Vx is this. So what this voltage source says is, I will just monitor the voltage across R2. I imitate that, but I scale it by a factor of 2. So that's what the voltage here is about. Okay, all right, so six steps, right? Step number one, find the ground. So any point is fine. Let's pick this one to be the ground. Step number two, assign voltages to the remaining nodes. So we have one, two, three nodes. So let us assign voltages. VA, VB, VC. Step number three, find the currents through the branches, if we can. So uh, the resistors definitely lend themselves to that. So how much is this current? Let's change the color so that the currents stand out. So this current is going from top to bottom. So it's the top voltage minus the bottom voltage. The bottom voltage is zero. See, all of these are connected by a piece of wire, so they form one node. So that current is VA over R1. How about this one? Uh, top voltage minus bottom voltage divided by R2. So this current is VB over R2. You might be tempted to say, well, it's also Vx over R2. That's true, but wait for that. We'll come back to that in a moment. And then finally, R3. R3 has a current. If you go from left to right, then it's the voltage on the left minus the voltage on the right divided by R3. So Vb minus Vc over R3. So we found the currents through all the branches that we could find. And uh, in the fourth step, we will try to write some KCLs. Okay. All right. Can I write a KCL at any of these nodes without getting into trouble? And the answer is no. Why? Because at this node, I have a voltage source. So remember, we don't write a KCL here. We don't involve the current of this guy in this process according to this point. Same problem here. And same problem here because we have a voltage source connected to that node. So we can't write our regular KCLs. We have to go to the concept of super node. All right, no problem. So the concept of super node means I have voltage source here. I will uh, uh, enclose this voltage source and the two nodes connected to it in a box. All right, and I just have to make sure that all the currents going to this box add up to zero. All right, so what do we have? 
we have this kernel coming out. So we write the KCL for the super node. We have VA over R1. Then we have this kernel coming out. So that's VB over R2. And then we have this current also coming out, and that's this value. So plus a VB minus VC over R3, that has to be equal to zero. All right? Okay, that's great. So we wrote uh, one KCL here. Let's move, uh, move to the other side of the circuit and see what we have to do. We have a voltage source between this node and this node. So we say, okay, maybe I should create a super node there as well, right? I have voltage source, I draw a box around the voltage source and the nodes connected to it. So let's draw, uh, let's change the color maybe to uh, something else. I draw a box here around the voltage source and the nodes connected to it. And I would like to write a KCL for this box as well. All right, so let's write that and see what we get. There's a current going into the box, this value. So we write uh, VB minus VC over R3. Okay, that's good. Uh, how about this side? What do we have going to this side? Well, we have a current through R2 coming in here. We have a current from R1 coming in here. Both of these have to go in here, right? This doesn't mean anything. This is just a symbol. It's not like it's connected to something. So if I have a current coming from this resistor and a current from this resistor, they add up and they have to flow through this voltage source. They don't have anywhere else. And they're also entering the circuit, just like this one. So we have to add up all of these on one side. So we have plus this current entering the green box, VA over R1, plus this current entering the green box, VB over R2, and the result is zero. Okay, so I wrote the KCL for this super node. Now, do you see a problem? Yes, there is a problem, right? The problem is that this equation is the same as this equation. So we didn't actually obtain a new equation. Why did this happen? Well, this happened because one of the nodes involved here is the ground. Remember, we don't write a KCL at ground because it doesn't give us any new information. So that's what happened here. So if a voltage source is connected from one of our nodes to the ground, then for that voltage source, we do not create a super node. Okay, so let's just get rid of that altogether because it doesn't give us any new information. All right, so then uh, let's go ahead and see what we need to do. We have three unknowns, V, A, V, B, V, C. Uh, so we need three equations for V, A, V, B, V, C. We found one KCL, so we should be looking for two KVLs. And that makes sense, right? Because we said that for every voltage source, we lose a KCL, so we have to write a KVL for every voltage source. We have two voltage sources, and these two voltage sources call for two KVLs. Okay, so let's see what kind of KVLs we can write. Uh, this voltage source and the two nodes attached to it, just following this type of example, right? So again, VA is positive here, negative here, right? Going like this. So I say minus plus VA going up the potential, traveling this way. Now this goes up in potential, so plus 2VX. I reach VB and I come back to ground. So VB is positive here, negative here. So minus VB going down to potential. This has to be zero. There's a KDL involving this voltage source. Now about this voltage source here? Well, one side is zero, so that's easy. The other side is VC. So uh, just like before, I can say, let's start uh, from, you can even go this way. You can say going up the potential V2, and then going down from VC back to zero. So minus VC equals zero. It's not surprising, right? If you just eyeball the circuit, you can see that this voltage source says the voltage from here to here is always V2. And this is what we call the VC. So VC is always equal to V2. Not surprising, right? Okay, so I found uh, uh, two KVLs. I have one KCL. I have three equations. 
Now we actually have four unknowns because Vx is also unknown. And that's the controlling parameter for this dependent source. Okay, so Vx is a voltage, so we should probably be looking for another KVL involving Vx. Is that clear? Sure, Vx is the voltage from here to here. And Vb is also the voltage from here to here. So Vx is just equal to Vb. So that's our last KVL. Vx is equal to Vb. And this KVL is written just because we have this unknown. Uh, and this unknown is necessary to find because it's the controlling parameter for that dependent source. Okay, so now I have uh, four equations and four unknowns, VA, VB, VC, and VX. So I can find everything. Okay, so that's a nice example, bringing all of these ideas together. And uh, we can see that the steps are relatively straightforward as long as we know what we are doing. All right, so let's see. Let's go to another example. This example is more complex, but uh, certainly uh, quite instructive. So let me go to the next page and draw this new example there. Okay, so let's look at this example. This is a relatively complex circuit, so I'm going to draw it pretty big so that we have room for annotations on the diagram itself. So we have a resistor on this side, a resistor on this side, then we have a current source going up, then we have a voltage source like so, then we have a dependent current source like so, then we have a dependent voltage source like so, and then we have a resistor here, and then we have a resistor here. Okay, so this is, these are all the connections. Let's give these some names. So R1, R2, R3, R4. So those are the four resistors that we have. Uh, then we have voltage source. This is independent, we call it V1. This is also independent I1. This current source is a function, so this is 0.5 times Vx. And Vx happens to be this voltage here. Vx is this voltage here. It's the voltage across R1 with this particular polarity. Okay, this is given to us, so we have to make sure that this polarity is observed in all of our equations. All right, and then uh, this voltage source is equal to 0.2 times Vy. And Vy is uh, the voltage across this resistor with this polarity. Okay, so again, we are given Vy as this voltage, and we are given that Vy has its high side here and its low side here. So we have to stick with that and solve the circuit accordingly. All right, so those are the details of the circuit, and now we have to go through all of the steps that we typically follow uh, to solve the circuit, find all the equations that we need. All right, so take a deep breath, and uh, let's fasten our seat belts and start writing everything. Step number one, assign a ground. Where should the ground be? Uh, anywhere you want. Uh, again, we're looking for a point that receives most of the branches, and that would be here. We have four branches coming together, so that's a natural place to write the ground, to assign the ground. So we'll just put this uh, symbol here so that we remember this is ground. Step number two. Assign voltages to all the other n minus one nodes. We have four other nodes left, right? So we just go ahead and call these VA, VB, VC, and VD. Four nodes. Step number three, write the currents through the branches if we can. So for resistors, that's easy. Okay, how much is the current through R4? Uh, again, the direction is up to us. If you want to choose the direction to be this way, then we say the current going this way is this voltage minus this voltage divided by the resistor. So 
So uh, the current is going from high potential to low potential. So we say high potential minus low potential divided by the resistor. So this current is VA minus VD over R4. All right. Okay. We can do that for all the resistors that we have. Uh, let's go to R1. We assign a current uh, whichever we want. So let's say, for example, the current is going this way. The current through R1 going that way is this voltage minus that voltage divided by the resistor. So that would be VA minus VB over R1. Okay? All right. How about this guy? Well, uh, again, pick a direction. For example, this way. And then we can say VB minus VC over R2. So VB minus VC over R2. And finally, we have R3. Which way should we pick the current? Uh, either way. So for example, let's say the current is going this way. If the current is, uh, is going from bottom to top, then its value is given by the bottom voltage minus the top voltage divided by the resistor. So that current is given by the bottom voltage which is VD, the top voltage is zero, divided by R3. All right. Okay, so you should always remember if the current is going from here to here with this direction, then they is given by this voltage minus this voltage divided by the resistor. Okay, so we found all the currents. Now we go to step number four and write KCLs. Uh, if there are some nodes that don't have any voltage sources attached to them, then the KCLs are pretty straightforward. Let's see if such a node exists. Uh, well, uh, this node is a good node, right? We have a resistor, a current source, and a resistor. We don't have any voltage sources connected to that node. So I can write a KCL there. That's a regular KCL, right? So KCL, let's write a KCL here. Okay, so we have this current entering, this current entering, this current leaving. So we say VA minus VB over R1 plus I1 is equal to VB minus VC over R2. That okay? So we have uh, three currents and we added them up properly. That's the KCL at the top node of the circuit. All right, uh, are there any other nodes uh, at which we can write a simple KCL? No, because this node has this voltage source, this node has this voltage source, this node has this voltage source. So we can't do that, we have to go and try to define some super nodes and then write the KCLs for the super nodes. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, for this voltage source, we create a super node, meaning we take this voltage source and the two nodes attached to it, put them in a box. So our box now looks like this. And now we just uh, add up all the currents going to this box, right? That would be another KCL. Okay, so what's going into this box? This is going to the box, this is going to the box. So let's add those up. I have a VB minus VC over R2 plus uh, 0.5 IVX. These two currents are entering this box. Uh, this current is leaving the box. This current is also entering. So let's just add that up. This current is entering the box. So that would be plus a VA minus VD over R4. So these th three currents are going into the box. And what's leaving the box? This one. This one is coming out of the box. Going out, right? So that would be VD over R3 is equal to VD over R3. We want to make sure that we haven't missed anything, right? So we have one, two, three, four, and we have four terms here. So we took care of all the currents that are going into or out of the super node. All right, that's great. Okay, so we got two KCLs. All right, can I create a super node involving this voltage source? No, this voltage source goes from a node to ground. Remember the last example we saw? We couldn't do that because it doesn't give us any new information. So we won't bother creating a super node here. All right, we just have to rely on KVLs. 
okay. Uh, overall, it makes sense. Uh, ordinarily, because I have four nodes, I would be looking for four KCLs. But because I have two voltage sources, I lost two KCLs, right? One voltage source here, one voltage source here. I lost two KCLs, so I have to look for two KVLs. One KVL involving this voltage source and these two node voltages, another KVL involving this voltage source and these two node voltages. Right, so let's go ahead and write two KVLs. So these are two KCLs that we wrote. Now we write two KVLs. Okay, so for this guy, again, you gotta go back to the picture we had on the previous page and make sure you do this very carefully so that we don't get confused about the signs. All right, VD. VD has its positive here, it's negative at ground, okay? So let's start with VD. I say going from ground to VD, going up the potential. So plus VD. Now going across this voltage source, going from high, uh, low to high. So that's also plus 0.2 VY. And then from VC back to ground. So I'm going from high potential to low potential. So minus VC equals zero. That's a KVL involving one of the voltage sources in the circuit. All right, we need one more KVL. And that would be for this guy, all right? So uh, how do I write that? Same, same situation, so I have a voltage here VA, a voltage here zero, and a voltage here called V1. So I don't even have to bother with the KVL, right? Because what does V1 do? V1 says, I would like to impress a voltage of V1 here, from here to here. And the voltage from here to here is already called VA. So VA and V1 are just equal. This happens anytime we have a voltage source, one side of which goes to ground, right? So we don't really need to write a full-blown KVL. We can just say that VA is just equal to V1 because that's what the voltage source wants to do. All right, okay. So we have four equations so far, but uh, we have actually more than four unknowns. We have VA, VB, VC, VD, but then we also have VX and VY. These are the controlling parameters for the dependent sources. So we have to find those as well. We have to write equations for them. Okay, so because we have VX and VY unknown and controlling parameters, we should probably look for KVLs. So for uh, VX, VX is here, positive here, negative here. Can I write VX in terms of something else? Sure, because VX is connected to VB and VA, so I can express VX in terms of VB and VA. In other words, I'm going to write a KVL involving VA, VX, and VB. So let's write some, some more KVLs. So I, I want to start from VA. Starting from zero, going up the potential to VA, so plus VA. Uh, going up the potential through VX, plus VX going down from VB to zero. So minus VB equals zero. All right, and how about VY? VY is here. So VY is surrounded by VD and VA. So we can write a KVL involving VD, VA, and VY. For example, let's start with VA. I'm going up the potential from zero to VA. So plus VA. Then going down the going up the potential from v for VY, because I'm going from negative to positive. So plus VY. And then going back to zero from VD. So minus VD equals zero. So we've got two more KVLs. So now we have all the equations that we need. We have uh, two KCLs, four KVLs, and we have six unknowns. We can find everything that we set out to find. All right, so this is a nice example uh, that shows us all the mechanics that we have to go through to solve any circuit. If we want to apply node analysis, then we also need to think about uh, whenever we have voltage sources, because voltage sources do cause this problem of writing KCLs, so we just have to go to super nodes or draw a box and carry out all the calculations. All right, so. So let's summarize what happened in the circuit. Uh, exactly. 
so that we see how the number of equations uh, changes. So we say uh, started with five nodes, right? We have five nodes, four plus this one. We call one of them ground, so called one ground or the reference. So now we have only four nodes. Okay, but then we have two voltage sources, so we lose two KCLs. Two voltage sources so we lose two KCLs. Okay, so we have only two KCLs left. So we have only two KCLs left. All right, so uh, because we have two voltage sources, we have to write two KVLs. So write two KVLs involving the voltage sources. Okay, and then because we have two more unknowns, two controlling parameters, we have to write two KVLs for them as well. So write two more KVLs involving unknown voltages Vx and Vy. Okay? So all of these steps take us to the point where we have all of the equations that we need. All right, very good. Okay, so uh, let's see here if there's any other point that uh, I wanted to raise. All right, okay. So uh, we have a few minutes left. Let's see if we can squeeze in one more example here. So suppose I have a voltage source on this side, called V1. I have a resistor here, R1. I have a voltage source on this side, V2. And then I have a resistor here, R2. Okay, very simple. I want to solve the circuit, right? If you don't want to follow node analysis for this very simple circuit, that's fine. You don't really have to. Uh, but let's just say we don't know anything else and we just want to solve a circuit, right? Okay, not a problem. So pick a ground. Anywhere is fine. Uh, in fact, in this case, there's not much difference. So we'll just uh, pick a ground, uh, for example, here. Ground. And then assign voltages. I assign, uh, what nodes do I have? One, two, three, three nodes, right? So I'm going to call this uh, VA. But should I call it VA? No, because this is already V1 from here to here, right? This voltage source wants to impress a voltage of V1 between this node and this node. So this node with respect to ground is already V1. So don't bother calling it VA, just call it V1. It's known, right? We don't have to create a variable if it's so obvious. Okay, uh, how about this node? Well, we don't really know how much that is, so let's call that uh, VA and this node here, what should I call that? I can call it VB, but uh, if this is VA and I'm going down by V2, can I predict what this is? Yes, that's just VA minus V2. Whatever we had, they subtracted this voltage from it, so this is just VA minus V2. In a sense, what I'm doing is I'm writing these KVLs in my mind, right? When I say this is V1, well, I could have called it VA, and then notice that VA is just equal to V1. Similarly here. Okay, so now we go ahead and write the currents. How much is the current through this branch? V1 minus VA over R1. V1 minus VA over R1. And how much is the current through this branch? For example, going from this side. 
this voltage minus ground VA minus V2 over R2. Okay, now we need to write a KCL. Uh, what kind of KCL should I write? Well, uh, I have voltage sources everywhere, so let's create a super node here involving this voltage source. And then we have a current going in, a current coming out. So I have a V1 minus VA over R1 is equal to VA minus V2 over R2. So that's one KCL that I wrote. I cannot write any other KCLs. And it turns out that this KCL suffices. I have one equation, one unknown. The unknown is VA, right? V1, V2, and R1 and R2 are known. So very quickly, we found the answer. I will see you next time.